page 240.
So thankful he see fit to my man that blessed lamb for yeah, the life. Yeah. It's all over, it's all it's gonna matter. Yeah, amen. Amen. I thank God he's in charge and not amen. man. I know if I was, I just messed it up a long time ago. Slow the Lord this morning, and I'm so glad he don't give up on me with all the wish you have. Amen. 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 I fail him every day. I ask for forgiveness every day. I try to do better, do the best I can. I thank you for your mercy upon me. Every day. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? I just want to say I love the Lord. And I'm so thankful to be back in his house today. You know, we make it where we can't come back in the house of God and worship. But we got to remember one thing. If that happens, God still on the throne. Amen. We can't let the devil get us if we get to where we can't come back and worship. We can still worship at home. We've got to stay strong. It's It's going to get to where it's going to be. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Susan. Amen. I just want to say I love the Lord. I just want to thank you for saving my soul. It feels so good hey. to be in church. Bless I bless it so much. Bless it's Lord. not the same watching on YouTube. It hey. just feels so good to be here. I can't realize that I, so I can't wait to get back to church. Amen. So hey. I just want to say I love each and every one of you. So just remember me and my family when you pray. God bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And what? I love the Lord and I love all of you. And I pray for the lost in my family, and I pray for the lost in your family. And I'm just so blessed to be back in church again. Amen. Nothing like being with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Well, I thank the Lord for being here in prayer for me, this for me and my family. You know, it's pretty great when my mom and dad need to go through. They said my dad's back was just crushed. He was broken so many times. So they like to fix him. Mel went his back and said he had to be just a chance to walk him. But you know what? God can raise him. Amen. You know, my mom can't raise her arm if you God can let him raise her arm. I just thank you for being <coughs> in my family. I'm so undeserving. But you know, he still loves me. And I'm so glad to be back in church. I know the church is in your heart, but you need to come and get other people. Amen. I took it for granted. I wouldn't never come with you tonight, but I felt so bad that I'm being here. I missed it. Just remember, 
RJ had just got killed there. He's what got in Bay Bay just to stick. And that's beside my friend this morning. So, so and me and me, me and Rob forget to just go back to skate. The dog from the dish to catch me. Amen. saving my soul for being here today. I thank you for his word. You know that it teaches us and instructs he instructs us on how we're supposed to live and what's acceptable and not acceptable to him. the Lord this morning been good to me yeah. I was uh, I was thinking this week I, I was a uh, bush hog there uh, Friday afternoon and uh, was farms five miles away and I got over and realized I forgot my safety glasses. So instead of driving all the way back, I didn't, I just uh, worked without them. And uh, of course, you know what happened? Two minutes before I was getting ready to quit, there's something plopped me in the eye. And, uh, and I ended up, Jamie made me go to urgent care. And that woman said, you don't look good. And, my eye was swell up. I said, you don't either right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, God gives us, God gives us his word. 
uh, keep us safe as well. Amen. To keep us, keep to protect our eyes, protect our ears, our our mouth, our heart. But if we don't use it, don't do us any good, right? And uh, my eyes still hurting a little bit, but it's getting better. But I, I thank the Lord for that. But it give me a reminder of, of what the Word does for us and what what you said. You know, it teaches us what to do and what not to do. And so I thank the Lord for His precious Word. It's the best uh, personal protective equipment we can have, right? Amen. Amen. I'll say something, I'll say, I can't hear you. I can't hear you with this mask on. And so, uh, but I guess that's, we, we don't realize it. And as we get older, I guess it gets to be more. Uh, my wife tells me I, I can't hear uh, too good anymore. And I, I said, do what? And she said, <laughs> I have to tell her, quit yelling at me. She said, you can't hear me if I don't. And it's about the truth. Uh, we're, all, we're all getting older. These young folks don't, even, don't know that yet. But we're all getting older. But get closer home. Amen. I was uh, listening to the radio this morning, and I don't know how many remembers the old Harden Brothers, uh, old group that sung many, many years ago. And, 
and they were singing a song about going home. And boy, it was good. It was <coughs> old time power. And uh, I thought, you know, I'm way, way past halfway home. You know, I don't know, maybe, maybe nine tenths of the way home. Maybe 99.9% uh, .9 of the way home. We don't know. But time is running uh, short yeah. on each of us. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is the Lord's coming back. Right. He may come back before before we leave. And then, then we'll leave when he does come back. Yeah. But uh, we may not face death, but we might. But, but we're going to have to keep, we're going to keep on keeping on. Yeah. We're going to carry on for God and realizing that every day, every day, we ought to be doing more for God. We're to be living closer to God. We're to be sharing the gospel more than we ever have. As time's running out on all of us. Surely, surely 2020 has helped us to realize, realize that. Uh, we looked at, in, in the book of Philippians Wednesday night, and I, I, I give you part of a message. I'm going to I'm going to move on a little further tonight. We're, we want to get to verse 14 mainly. And we're going, to, we're going to talk about, for a few minutes, pressing toward the mark. I press toward the mark, Paul said. And, and we're, going to, we're going to do our best to, to try to uh, give you what God's given us. And hopefully we're all moving toward uh, God closer to God. Philippians chapter 3 verse number 14 Philippians 3 and 14 and I believe this was Paul's he was getting down to the end and getting ready for getting ready to uh, depart from this world and I like it when he I like it when he tells us on the end of the, the, the scripture that I fought a good fight and that I've, I've kept the faith. And, but if we're going to finish well, we're going to have to run well. Amen. And if we're going to have to run well, we're going to have to press toward the mark. Amen. Press toward the mark. Mm -hmm. Ch uh, chapter 3, verse 14, Philippians. Paul says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Brother A.J., will you lead us in prayer, please? Dear most gracious Heavenly thank Father, you. thank you for giving us a chance to be back in this church. We know people up there miss you so much. The ones out there that can't come, we just pray that they're able to get in here one day. If not, just touch their soul. Keep, keep them in your will. Keep us all in your will. We know how easy it is to take one wrong step. It is. We're out of control before we know it. We have Brother Dwayne to give us this message. Pray for all the sick. Pray for all the lost out there in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I will. I will say if my, my eye runs sometimes where I hurt it, and when my eye runs, it makes my nose run. But I ain't got. To, I ain't sick. I just if I have to stop and wipe my eye or wipe my nose, please just to carry on, okay? But Paul says I press toward the mark. Press toward the mark. Now, a lot of times, and I've said this before, I, I thought several years ago about how my my grandfather he 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 made he's always time carving stuff out, and he made me a, a bow and he made me some arrows, and Granny would always tell me if I kill a chicken we'd have it for supper. I never did kill a chicken with that bow, with that bow and arrows. I, but there was one that I knocked most of her feathers off, but she could duck. But the reason, the reason I never did kill one, is I never did get close enough to hit one. Not, not a good solid lick. I'd catch her feathers, as I said. But the reason, and you hear folks say talk about, well, I missed the mark. We'll talk about living for God, and they'll say, well, I, 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 I missed the mark. And I thought about that, and I thought the reason that we missed the mark is many times we're too far away from the target. Bless 
We're, 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 we're standing way back here, shooting way over yonder, wondering why we keep missing the mark. Well, if we get close to Christ, who is the mark? When you read this scripture, the mark is Jesus. And yes, we fall short of the glory of God, but we also like to use that as an excuse when we do miss the mark, we like, to, we like to quote that scripture. Ain't it funny how quickly we learn that scripture and say, well, we all fall short when all we're really doing is making an excuse for doing what we want to do, living the way we want to live, and then we expect God to move the target to where we're shooting Instead of us trying to hit the target that God has given us in his precious word. Amen. It's true. Uh, Christians have all kinds of uh, excuses. And most of them's got backup excuses. Amen. And they got them ready. When you, when you ask them a, a, a question, they'll give you their standard excuse. And, and then if, if, if you question that one, they have another one. And it's a shame because God, I'm glad Jesus never made an excuse and, and, to, and didn't go to the cross. I'm glad he didn't say, well, these people hate me. I'm not going to do this. I'm glad he didn't say, well, they're not going to listen anyway. I'm not going to do this. I'm glad Jesus did his job because if he hadn't have did his job, none of us would have a hope of heaven. Also, if God, and somebody said, well, it's by faith, it's by grace, of course it is, but God give us a standard in his word. And when we fall short, it's because we're not following the standard that God has given us in his word. I'd rather do it my way. And, and that's where we fall short. Instead of God's way, we choose to do things our way. And when we do things our way, we are going to miss the mark. Amen. The only time and the only way that we're going to hit the mark is if we're going to follow the word of God into what it says. Paul said, I press toward the mark. I'm pressing toward the mark. Now, to, to, uh, to press means to apply Pressure. You to open a door, you gotta push against the door or pull pull on the door. Most of the time, uh, uh, we've got to. And, and some doors are harder to open than others, but you've got to put some pressure on it. I had to apply pressure with a desire to move. If if I'm gonna if I'm gonna move this pulpit, I can't just lay my hand on. It. And I can't stand back and hope for it to move. And I can't stand back and, 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 and look at it and, and wait for somebody else to move it. I've got to put some pressure on it. And this thing is heavy. You're going to have to put a lot of pressure on it. That's why we slide it when we, when we get ready to move it. But it, it still takes pressure, don't it? So Paul realized to press toward the mark was more than just standing back and looking at the mark and expect the mark to move and, and, and to where we want it to move. We've got to do something. We got to, we got to do something about it. We've got to press toward the mark. And toward is a direction. Yeah. Yeah. Toward is a direction. If uh, if uh, and, and, and direction toward what in this in this scripture? It's a direction toward the mark. It's a, a direction toward the goal that Paul had. His goal was to be more like Christ. His goal was to follow Christ. His goal was to do what Christ had given him to do. That was, that was his goal. That was his mark. And that was what he was pressing to, uh, toward. If, uh, if I was to tell you how to get to my house uh, today, I would tell you to... to Go out here and, uh, and hit the bypass and 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 go 
uh, east until until you see a sign that says Raytown and then turn left and then turn right and I could give you directions but if you if if uh, if you started that way and you see the sign that said Tusculum and that's where you stopped you could say well I was going towards your house but you didn't go far enough right and sometimes as Christians we say well I'm trying to move toward the mark but but we stop way short of the mark. We stop and tusk them and wonder why my why the, I, the directions that I give us was so bad. Amen. We stop and tusk them and say, well, he said go this direction. Well, God's word is more than just a direction. It's a mark. It's a destination. Amen. If, uh, and, 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 but, you know, some folks just should get try If you tell them to go, uh, 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 you give them directions to my house, they'd look up and see, see a sign that said Bull's Gap and still be mad at me for giving bad directions. But the fact of the word, matter is, the Word of God is perfect directions on how to get to the mark, Amen. how to reach our goal. And we, we, we want to, but we want to go our way. We want to go our way, and I'll tell you something, the further and further you go in the wrong direction, the further and further you're going to get from the mark of God. Ain't that right? I just realized I still got a cop drop in my jaw. Excuse me. So we've got a goal in mind. Paul had a goal in mind. He had a, a, not just a direction, but he had a goal in mind. That's why at the end of his life that he, he could say, I've kept the faith. I've kept the faith. I've finished my course. You know the reason a lot of folks don't finish the course? Because they don't want to finish the course. They want to, they want to do have a little belief, easy believism. I went to an altar when I was 12 years old, and so I finished my course. No, that's the beginning of the course. That's, right. that's the starting point. We won't reach the goal until we get to glory. Amen. 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 So we better be on we better be we better be pressing toward the mark. And we better be reaching toward the finish line. And we better uh, be going the right direction. And realizing that if we stop short of the mark, we're not going to get there. I just lost a lot of Baptists right there. They tuned out. How many numbers went down? Do you believe that people start this race and don't finish it? Amen. Amen. You know how I know that happens? Because I've seen, I've seen it happen. I've witnessed it happen. I've, I, I know of, uh, I, I, I was thinking this morning of a, a, a couple of preachers that's been in my life in the past, and, 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 and this is not down on preachers. I know many more that kept the faith and finished the course, but, but, but I thought of two particular ones that started well and, 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 and then quit along the way. One, one began to look at a, 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 somebody that wasn't his wife, amen, and, and begin to listen to her sweet talk. And the next thing you know, left his wife, left his family, uh, moved in with a home wrecker. And you know what happens when you move in with a home wrecker? You get your home wrecked, amen? And then a home wrecker kicks you out as soon as the home is wrecked. And that's a, that's a and, and, and I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not blaming it on her. He knew better. He knew better. The last time I saw him, he, he, he was at a, at, a, at, a, at a beer store or at a, at a, at a, at a, a convenience store, but had a, 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 a six pack of beer up under his arm. And, I, and it, it broke my heart. I heard him preach and I saw him uh, trying to live for God in younger days. And, and now he was carrying uh, alcohol with him. And the next time I saw him was when they said, oh, he, he passed away. Young man, passed away, died unexpectedly. And you know why? God don't fool around, amen. When we choose to uh, turn away from God, 
What do we expect to happen? Somebody said, oh, they did. God just killed him and took him home. I say this today. If you quit on God, your home ain't in glory today. Your home is in another place. So we better have a goal in mind and we better press toward the mark of a high calling of God or we're not going to make it. I say this. I've got a God that's worth holding on to, ain't you? I've got a goal in mind that's worth every step of the way. And I, I, I pray to God, give me strength to keep going forward and pressing forward and moving toward the mark that God has set for me. I'm going to need his help. You are too. If 2020 taught us one thing, is we need Jesus. Amen. We need him more than we thought we did. We need church more than we thought we did. We need Sunday school more than we thought we did. We need friendship more than we thought we did. We need fellowship more than we thought we did. Praise God. Maybe God has just shown us, amen, that we've been falling short of the mark. Maybe we've been taking the things of God for granted. Maybe we've been taking the word of God for granted. Maybe we've been taking fellowship for granted. Maybe we've been taking church for granted. But I want to say this today. We better have our eyes on the prize and keep pressing toward the mark. Amen. Keep pressing toward the mark. I read about a woman in the Bible that pressed through the crowd, don't you? Amen. You know why she pressed through that crowd? Because she had a sickness and she had tried everything that man had thought of to get it fixed, but she grew worse. She grew worse. She had an issue of blood. And she pressed through the crowd when she heard about a man named Jesus. And you know, when she got a hold of a hem of his garment, and you know where that hem is, don't you? It's way down by his feet. So you know what? I, I realize when I read that, sometimes I've got to crawl, amen. Sometimes I've got to get down, and God's got to humble me down and get me to a place where I have to crawl before I can press through the crowd. But you know what happens when you press through the crowd and take a hold? of the garment of Jesus Christ he knows somebody touched me amen and he turned and looked at the one who touched him and he healed her of her infirmity I want to say this today if we get a hold of Jesus if we get our eyes on the prize and crawl if we have to toward Jesus he can take care of us and solve the issues of our lives amen. he could we carry around too many issues because we won't get close enough to the mark. Well, you know what? You know what I think. I think a lot of folks like being uh, felt sorry for. Praise God. You know what? I don't care. I don't. I don't want nothing in my life where you have to feel sorry for me. When I was sick, I didn't like it. When I poked my eye out the other day, I didn't like it. I don't want nobody feeling sorry for me. I want to get close enough to Jesus, amen, where I've got that, that, that healing part of God upon my life, where I know no matter what happens, if I, I'm close enough to the mark where he can just reach out and lay his hand on me and with his healing power, amen, and touch me, and if we would stay close enough to him, he'd heal us of a lot of things going on in our life. There's something, there's something a whole lot worse than COVID out there. Amen. That's right. And it's been there a long time. It's been there since the very first man and the very first woman. It's a, a little three-letter word called S-I-N, amen. Right. And it's a whole lot worse than COVID. It's a whole lot worse than the flu. It's a whole lot worse than cancer. Amen. Seeing is why people miss the mark is because they say something there that they like better than the mark. Amen. amen. Right. And they'll fall into sin. And, and we say that, and, and that's an old term, fall, oh, he fell into sin. No, people don't fall into sin. They jump into sin. Amen. They dive into sin head first. Amen. And, and, and then when you do, you miss the mark of God. So we better hold true to the Lord. Amen. Amen. His disciples, Jesus said, somebody touch me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You know what? You can touch him if you want. They all could have touched him if they wanted to. He's, they said the crowd, Lord, the crowd is thronging you. They're all over you. 
they, they, they was bumping against him, but they wasn't touching him. Yeah, there's a difference. They was crowding up. They was, they was in the crowd, but they wasn't touching him. You know, the, they, like Jimmy said, there's a difference. If you can, hey man, if you want to get a hold of Jesus this morning, you can get a hold of Jesus this morning. Amen. If you if you're waiting for somebody else to shout this morning, you probably never will shout. Amen. If you're waiting for somebody else to give praise to God, you probably never will give praise to God. Sometimes we're in the crowd. Amen. Sometimes we're just out there and we say, well, we went to church, so that put us in the crowd. Amen. I, I like it when people get that that come out from the crowd. And get a hold of the Lord, and then God can do something in our life. And then, no matter what our issues is, Jesus can fix them today, and He can get our eyes back on the mark, and He can put us back where we need to be. Amen. Amen. And we can leave here fixed. Amen. 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 Yeah, I like I like to get I like to get things fixed up, don't you? Amen. He'll fix them if you let Him. Jesus is the mark. I want to say this. For those that are on the fence this morning, I want you to know there's a big difference between pressing toward the mark and going through the motions. Amen. You ought to write that down. There's a big difference between pressing toward the mark and going through the motion. That's right. Amen. Amen. You know what happens when you go through the motions? You just you just think you're on your way. Yeah. You just think you're pressing toward the crowd. You just uh, Amen. I, I watched the ball game yes. I watched the big arms yesterday, amen. The, the, the little arms are what they are. And and, and and I had one eye swelled shut. They looked awful with just one eye. Amen. You know why? It looked like they was going through the motions. Yeah. And you know what? There's a lot of Christians today that seem like they're just going through the motions. Well, I want to say this. When we stand before God, He's not going to pat us on the back and say, well, I'm glad that you went through the motions. I'm glad you showed up at Sunday school every now and again. I'm glad that you, that you, that you let on like you're a Christian anyway. No, he's going he's gonna to say, he's going to talk to the faithful and then he's going to talk to the unfaithful. And if those that are faithful, he's going to say, I'm glad you kept your eyes on the mark. I'm glad you kept your eyes on the prize. I'm glad you kept pressing forward. It didn't matter what 2020 threw at you. It didn't matter what the world threw at you. It didn't matter hey, what COVID threw at you. You just kept on pressing toward the mark. Therefore, there's a crown of life laid up for you. Hey, Amen. I'm glad. I'd rather hear that than I'm sorry you was faithless. You went through the motions. Depart from me, you workers. Nobody. I, I believe this. I believe this. 2020 has exposed a lot of people. Man. Huh? 2020 has exposed a lot of people. Are we serious about God or not? Are we serious about living for Jesus or not? Are we serious about pressing toward the mark or not? Or, or, is it, or has 2020 just been a great big old excuse where we can now say, well, I didn't want to live for God. Now i got a good excuse not to. Hey, I want to say this. It don't matter what the devil throws at you. It don't matter what the world throws at you. If you want to press toward the mark, amen, everything else will have to get out of the way and you can keep on keeping on for God. Amen. You can. It's a truth, isn't it? Paul, Paul could have said, well, yeah, I got rid of God, and everybody, all my friends turned against me. I believe I'll just go, I'll go over in the, in the corner and pout a while. But he never done that. Paul could have said, "Well, I, I, I was doing real good. I was living for God. Look what it got me. It got me thrown into an inner prison." No, he just sung and prayed his way out. Amen. 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 And the jailer got born again. And his family too. Paul could have said, "Well, I was beaten." I was whipped. I was I was beaten. I I, I was stoned. I was I was treated awful. Uh, but so I held on as long as I could. But I just couldn't do it no more. No, he didn't say that either. 
Paul could have said, well, it was going okay, but then I was on this ship, you see, and on that ship, there was a horrible wind. There was a terrible wind, and that wind just started breaking up that ship, throwed us into the, uh, to the, to the rocks, and the ship, the ship sunk, and, and I had to, had to paddle my way over to, to dry land. I so, so I was doing pretty good, but that was just too much. And Paul didn't quit then either. Paul could have said, well, they got me to shore. God got me to shore. And these barbarians built me a fire. But you know what? I was I was there going to put wood to fire and a, and, a, and a stupid old serpent come out and latched on my arm. So I said right then, well, I believe I'll just quit. No, he didn't quit then either. Amen. If that didn't make Paul quit, it shouldn't stop us. Amen. We got the Holy Ghost of God living in our soul. We got the power of God living in our spirit. Amen. If that didn't stop Paul, praise God, in 2020 shouldn't stop us. How about that? Amen. He had all kind of good excuses he could have used, but he never quit. He kept pressing toward the mark. They may be shipwrecks between you and the mark, but God will take you through them. Amen. They may be serpents. I told my mom, I said, I found it. There's an old piece. I was up there bush hogging around the barn. There's an old piece of tea in the And I thought, I guarantee you there's a big old black snake under that. I lifted it up anyway. And then I set it back down because they sure was. They sure was. And I thought next time I go back, lift up that piece of tin. I ain't going to lift it with my hand. I'm going to have a hoe and probably a shotgun. Amen. And he's going to be one dead serpent. You know what Paul did with that serpent that got a hold of him? He just shook it all into the fire. Amen. He just shook it into the fire. And we, at 2020, he's beat some of us down so much that we can't live for God. Amen. Oh, it's been it's too dangerous to live for God. That's what they keep trying to tell Trump. You can't go out there. Amen. You, you, it's too dangerous. He said, I can't be president from the basement. Amen. Take that for any way you want to. We can't be Christians from the basement. Neither. Amen. We can't hide from the world and wait for the world uh, to get better. It ain't going to get no better until we quit hiding. Amen. And start pressing toward the mark of God. Start pressing for the mark of Christ Jesus and get up and live for God. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Julia brought me something this morning and you probably can't see it. It's so small. She said, it's, it's two little feet, what it is. It's two little feet. Bless him, Lord. And she said, she said, you know, that's the size of a, of a baby's feet when a, when a mother is, is six weeks pregnant. And they're tiny, but they got little toes on them. They're tiny, but they got little heels on them. They're tiny, but when you look at them, you know what they are. And I want to tell the world today, Amen. We better get our eyes on the fact that this world is getting worse and worse. Right. We're calling good evil and evil good. It's time for the church to wake up. Right. It's time for the church to get up. And it's time for the church to press toward the mark. I'll guarantee you something. And you say you harp on this a lot. Amen. I'm going to keep harping on it. Amen. It's time for the church to stand up and say murdering these babies no matter how, what size they are in the womb is a sin against nature. It's a sin against the baby and it's a sin against God and we will stand before God and answer for what we do about this situation. mother, she's got a right to choose. Yeah, she did. She had a right to choose. 
She should have chose something different. That's right. Amen. That's right. She should have not chosen sin. And then when when it ain't that baby's fault for what she did. It ain't that baby's fault for and she wasn't by herself, by the way. You you men, you ought to know better as well. We ought to it's time to come out from among the world and the church to be the church and to be the moral compass of this nation so we can get back to where we need to be. Amen. Press toward the mark for the prize. For the prize. Praise God for the prize. Amen. And that prize, he calls it a high calling of God. I've got some. I want you to know something this morning. I'm glad when, when the Bible speaks of callings, I'm glad I've answered a few calls in my life. Ain't you? Since I got that smart aleck phone, I get a lot more calls. Most of them trying to renew my warranty on my truck. It's got 250,000 miles on it. I never get a human being, though. It's always that recorded. But there's a call. There's some calls I'm glad I answered. The first one is that call to salvation. Amen. What if on the road to Damascus, when Jesus spoke to Paul, when he was the name was still Saul, said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? You know what he said? He knew the Lord, but he said, Who are you, Lord? He said, It's Jesus. It's Jesus. You know what? Jesus has made a call on our lives. Those watching on the on the, on the YouTube and the and, and the Facebook, the Jesus has offered a call to your lives. He's called you to salvation. He's called you to be born again. Amen. Amen. Ain't you glad you answered that call? Amen. Some of us is the last call we ever answered up. We want to be saved. We want to go to heaven, but we don't want to press toward the mark. There's another calling. There's another calling. He calls us to follow him, don't he? Follow Jesus. He says, follow me. You know what that is? It's complete dedication. Amen. Complete dedication. That means he comes before anything else. <coughs> that means he comes before everything else. Amen. Jesus does. Amen. He comes before your family. Amen. He comes before your children, your grandchildren, from before your wife, before your job before anything else. Jesus, when he says, follow me, he's calling us to put him first and foremost in our lives. Amen. Amen. Be totally dedicated to him. I'm glad Paul answered that call as well. He set an example to each of us, didn't he? How to follow Jesus. <coughs> How to follow Jesus. I followed him pretty good, preacher. So 2020 come along. I've, I've done pretty good. Till the COVID hit, I done pretty good and until all this uh, global pandemic hit. Well, I say this: I never read in the Bible where God says, "Follow me up to this point." Nope. He says, "He just said, follow me." Amen. And then there's a call to service. You know what Jesus told his disciples? He says, "Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men." Amen. Call me, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. You know what, Daryl, that man that you work with, that you've been talking to, you know what you're doing? You're praise God, you're fishing. You're trying to catch him. You're trying to you're trying to teach him that that there's a better way. And the only hope that we have is salvation. Amen. But salvation is where it begins. That's where the starting line is. And then we're to learn to follow Jesus and learn to be workers. In the kingdom of God. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. <laughs> where I work, where I work, they said, put a mask on and come on to work. So we can put a mask on and get to work for God, right? That's right. Amen. Amen. Jesus, in his last words in the book of Mark, says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There's a lot of creatures out there that need to hear about Jesus. 
And here's why. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. That's what it's all about. You see, without salvation, we're going to read what happens. But he that believeth not shall be damned. You know what we're doing when we refuse to answer the call to service? We're basically going to tell somebody, you can be damned, I can care less. You don't, if you want to go to hell, go on. No, that's not what he tells us to do. He, go, you know, or preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Damned, damned means going to hell with no hope. Going to hell. Burning in hell forever. Does that sound, that sounds awful to me. When you think about somebody in your family that's lost. When you think about somebody in your family that don't know Jesus, do you ever think about what would happen if they was to leave this world today? Do you ever think about what if they were burning in hell by tomorrow? What what if if we if we thought of it that way, if we thought of it, well they, they could be burning in hell by tomorrow, what would we do different today? What would we do different today? I believe we would answer the call. The high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There may be somebody here this morning. You've been going through the motions, living on emotions or commotions. Maybe you're not where you need to be with God. And you say, Well, I can't go to an altar now. They all know. Well, God already knows. Amen. Maybe you've just been floating along, wishing 2020 was over with, wishing things would change for the better. And maybe God's waiting for us to change for the better. Maybe you're here this morning and you know you need to come to this altar. You know you need to come and pray. Or maybe there's somebody on the, on, on, on the internet watching that knows today that they're lost or they're backslidden. My Bible tells me you don't want to die that way. Better get right with God. Live for God. And when we die, we, we finish your course. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we bow before you today. We ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would speak to hearts here this morning. It's awful easy to point fingers at somebody else and tell them you're missing the mark. But it's hard to look in the mirror. And tell that man or that woman, you're missing the mark. Lord, we all go through times of discouragement. We go through times of depression. We go through times where we think, I don't know if I can make it another day. But Lord, as Paul said, as Paul said, I press, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, in Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, today. Help us get up and press toward the mark. Let us not fall short. Let us not stop short. Let us not go the wrong direction. Let us follow Jesus all the way, all the way, all the way to the end. And we know we'll be in heaven forevermore. God, if there's somebody listening that needs Jesus today, please speak to their heart. Let them pray. Let them repent. Let them call on Jesus and then follow him with everything they have. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Turn, turn on God.